Now we are going to connect our concept of uh, electronegativities with finding oxidation states. Remember this fact that uh, find oxidation states are hypothetical charges. So it's uh, not an issue if you're dealing with ionic compounds which already have charges. For example, NaCl and NaCl, Na has a charge of plus one, so its oxidation is oxidation state is plus one. And uh, let's write down NaCl. Na is plus one, and Cl is minus one. So uh, finding charges is not an issue in ionic compound, but it is definitely an issue when you're dealing with covalent compounds. For example, you have uh, HCl, you have hydrogen and chlorine bonded together by a covalent compound. So there are no charges over here. So we need to figure out uh, a way to assign oxidation states to these charges. And we have already studied about electronegativities. Now, if you look at uh, this HCl, there's, there are two electrons being shared between H and Cl, they, which are forming the covalent compounds mentioned over here. Now, if you look at the periodic table and the concept of electronegativities, chlorine is more electronegative, which basically means it has a higher tendency to gain electrons. So these two electrons are going to reside closer to chlorine. And uh, we can redraw this in a more clearer manner. The two electrons are going to be much closer to chlorine. I'm highlighting this fact. So they're going to be much closer to chlorine. So chlorine would be slightly negative because it would have, it would partially be occupying the electron coming from hydrogen. And this one will have a slight positive charge. So in a way it has lost an electron. Now, we treat this partial sharing. I mean, there's the, both of these atoms are pulling and there's a competition going on. Chlorine is w clearly winning it because it's a more electronegative element. So we treat this as ionic substances. If we look at HCl and think of it as an ionic substance, chlorine has actually taken up one of the electrons which was uh, coming from hydrogen. So chlorine, instead of writing a slight partial negative charge, which basically indicated that the electron coming from hydrogen was partially tilting towards chlorine, we can think of it as being taken up by chlorine. So chlorine would have a minus one charge and hydrogen would have a plus one charge. So these would be the oxidation states of hydrogen and chlorine. Uh, hydrogen would be plus one, chlorine would be minus one when it comes to HCl. Uh, but we know that th these are hypothetical charges. These, these are not real charges. Hydrogen has only a partial positive charge and chlorine has a partial negative charge. And in actual, uh, in reality, they are sharing two electrons. And there are no actual minus one and plus one happening in this molecule. But we can think of it as an ionic compound. And that's hypothetical, not actual. We can think of other molecules. We can find out other uh, covalent compounds. For example, we have water. Now, what it has, uh, this is a water molecule. It has an oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogen atoms. Both are sharing electrons. Now, oxygen is more electronegative, so both of these electrons, I mean, both of these pairs of electrons will be residing, residing much closer to oxygen. They'll be, they'll be lying closer to oxygen. So, in a way, if we think of it as an ionic compound, Oxygen is the one which has gained an electron from this hydrogen and it has also gained an electron from this hydrogen. So oxygen would be minus two, whereas the hydrogens over here, this hydrogen has lost an electron. One of the electrons in this bonding pair was coming from this hydrogen, so it has lost an electron. So hydrogen would be plus one. This one would be plus one and this one also would be plus one. Let's look at another example. For example, we, we can uh, have a chlorine molecule. This here represents a chlorine molecule and it has, uh, both chlorines are contributing one electron to the bond which is being formed. Now, chlorines are equally electronegative, which basically means that neither of the chlorines is going to pull the electrons towards themselves. So, so neither chlorine, we cannot treat uh, this as an ionic compound. This chlorine would not be pulling electrons because this screen will be equally pulling electrons towards itself. So these two electrons remain where they are. So since neither chlorine is gaining a partial positive or a partial negative charge, so the oxidation states on both chlorines is going to be neutral. It's going to be zero over here and the charge on this chlorine would also remain 
zero. So this is another example. We can take another example of let's say NH3. You have nitrogen and which is bonded to three hydrogen atoms. Now since nitrogen is bonded to three hydrogen atoms, nitrogen is the more electronegative element. So let's say these are the bond electrons being shared in the bonds between nitrogen and hydrogen. So you can see that these two electrons are going to reside closer to nitrogen because it's more electronegative. Same would be the case with this third pair of electrons. So all of these three are going to be residing closer to nitrogen. And since they're residing closer to nitrogen, that basically indicates uh, nitrogen is taking back three three of these electrons belong to nitrogen itself and it's taking up one electron each from each of the hydrogens so we can think of nitrogen as gaining three electrons so the charge of nitrogen is going to be minus three over here and each of the hydrogen this hydrogen is uh, this electron is going to reside closer to nitrogen so this hydrogen is in a way losing electrons so this would be h plus one so we figure out the oxidation states of nitrogen in this in this uh, molecule as well and similarly we can have uh, other examples as well for example you have uh, uh, we can we can talk about pcl3 now over here chlorine is the more electronegative element so these are the electrons being shared in the bonds between phosphorus and chlorine as forming PCL3. So these two electrons are going to reside closer to chlorine. It's more electronegative. These two will reside closer to chlorine as well. And these two are going to reside closer to chlorine as well. So chlorine will gain one of the electrons, slightly gain one of the electrons of phosphorus. So it will have a partial negative charge and we will treat that partial negative charge as Cl minus 1. So chlorine is going to have a minus 1 charge and phosphorus is losing how many electrons? It's losing one electron to this chlorine, partially losing one of the electrons to this chlorine, partially losing one of the electrons to this chlorine, partially losing one of the electrons to this chlorine. So phosphorus is losing three, ele uh, three electrons so it will have a plus 3 charge.